Hello everyone. In today's video I want to tell you about some different activities that you can use in your lessons that demonstrate the lexical approach in action. So activity number one is perhaps not the most innovative exercise on this list, but a tried and tested one, the gap fill. However, we're going to make a slight change to the way we look at gap fills. Normally, one word is removed, but as we focus on lexical chunks, we will instead remove the entire chunk. The effect of this is that students see the chunk as being a whole unit of meaning and to decide which chunk goes in which sentence, they have to look at the cotext that appears around the chunk. This is what I would use when I'm introducing chunks for the first time. Later, I might use gap fills where just one word is missing if I want to test the student's memory of chunks as they can use the parts of the chunk that are there to remember the missing word. Another activity that's been used for a long time and still has a place in the lexical approach is sentence matching. Here, we either have two parts of a sentence or two sentences we need to think about whether we split chunks in this exercise. Like with gap fills, when introducing new chunks, my inclination is to keep the chunk together and split the sentence before or after it so that students see it as something that goes together and have to focus on cotext and the meaning of the chunk. When students are familiar with the chunk, splitting a sentence mid-chunk allows them to use their knowledge of chunks to match the sentences and so removes the need to think about meaning. The next activity is changing cotext, and this is an easy adaptation of many non-lexical course books. You often get some kind of controlled practice where students have to use some grammatical form to complete a list of sentences or questions. A very easy thing to do in this case is to get students to come up with a second sentence or answer for each one. You could also reduce the sentences to a sentence stem and have students find different ways of finishing the stem. Or if there are pairs of sentences, you can have students suggest alternatives for the second sentence. In each case, you should be ready to offer some alternatives of your own too. An activity that's very specific to the lexical approach is lexical mining. This involves picking out new lexical chunks from a reading or listening in order to learn them and possibly use them productively. One of the ways that some teachers try to introduce this with their students is to tell them to find five useful lexical chunks for homework. However, this may fail miserably because students probably don't know what a chunk is or how to determine its utility or usefulness. Instead, what we can do is provide a table with three columns. In the middle, write the head words that you want them to find. Tell students to find them in the text and then add the words that come before and after in the columns. In the next lesson, add their ideas to the whiteboard and expand on them and ask questions. We can do this with listenings too. Have students listen and note the words that come before or after. Be sure to play the listening multiple times and get them to check against the audio script. Don't give them the audio script until they've heard it a few times because it will turn it from a listening into a reading. Finally, the last activity I'm going to go through is a dictogloss. This isn't specific to the lexical approach, but it does exemplify how we think about language in chunks. In a dictogloss, you read a familiar text, so one that they've dealt with before, to the class three times at normal speed. The students should just listen and try to remember. After the third reading, let students note as many words as they can remember. Now put students into groups and ask them to try and recreate the text. The way this activity works is that students first remember content words, which are often the head words in a lexical chunk. Once they have these, they start to fill in the gaps in between using the functional grammar words by using their knowledge of lexical chunks. 
An alternative is to have the students call out words they remember and tell them where they go in a grid. I don't think this works as well with smart students since they realise after a while that articles, conjunctions and other function words often fill many slots and so they start to go for those items first which undermines uh, the activity. So thank you for watching. I hope you enjoy trying out these activities with your classes. If you found them useful, please like, subscribe, comment. Thank you very much.